Now, starting with protein, they say that you should consume roughly What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Chan Chan. Now, if you've landed on this video, chances are you are probably in a spot where you want a workout regimen, you want a meal plan, you want to know what do I eat? What do I do to lose fat and gain muscle? And today I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to cover meal planning. I'm going to cover how many calories you should be consuming. I'm going to cover macros. What are they? How many should you have of each? Uh, and I'm also going to go over my workout plan as well as cardio. Should you do it? Should you not do it? Um, you know, a little disclaimer before I get into today's video is that there's a whole bunch of diets out there, right? You have keto, low carb, carb cycling, you have paleo, vegetarian, whatever it is. But the one thing that I want you guys to understand that all these diets have in common is they all have a calorie deficit. And you see any meal plan, anytime you're trying to lose weight, it all boils down to one basic thing and that is calories in or calories consumed versus calories out, calories expended, right? If you can eat less than you burn, you're gonna lose weight, it's science. Yes, science! A lot of this comes down to consistency. If you can stay consistent, you will succeed. I think a lot of these diets lure us in and it's almost like I can throw $5 into Dogecoin and hope that it goes up to $500 a coin and I'll have $50,000. So I think a good structured meal plan and workout regimen is a lot like the high yield savings account or the 401k where you have to just be consistent and know that in the long run it will pay off. There is no quick way to get lean and build muscle. All these videos that you see out there where it's like, oh, six minute abs or this or that, that is not true. Okay, there's nothing that's gonna make you lean overnight or in a week or two weeks, it's just not gonna happen. However, I will provide you with the tools that you'll need to have a good structured program, uh, workout and nutrition program. So you do have a plan. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. First thing we gotta do is calculate calories. How we're going to do that is we're going to use what's called the Harris Benedict formula. I've linked it in the description. Now what you do here is you plug in your age, height, weight, and sex to find a number and that number is your BMR or also known as your basal metabolic rate. This is how many calories you burn on a daily basis by doing absolutely nothing. Then it's going to ask you a question on how active you are and I would say be very honest here because um, it's going to multiply it by a number and that's going to give you your maintenance calories. Once you find that number, whatever it is, it could be 2400, it could be 3500, whatever that number is, you're going to subtract your deficit and this is what I talked about earlier, the calories in versus the calories out. So a healthy deficit is anywhere from 200 to 500 calories. So for me, I burn roughly 1876 calories, that's my BMR, multiplied by how active I am, it comes out to roughly 3,150 calories. If I wanted to lose weight, I would subtract 300 calories. So now you guys can do that and figure out how many calories you burn on average, your maintenance calories, and then subtract what you want your deficit to be. And from there, we can then start talking about macronutrients, proteins, carbs, fats. How many of each macronutrient will you consume? Okay. So now that we know our BMR, we've multiplied it by how active we are, so we now have our maintenance calories. We need to figure out how many of each macronutrient we should be eating. Now, I think macronutrients can be overcomplicated. Some of you guys might not even know what macronutrients are. Here's a quick lesson in macronutrients. You have proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Now, a protein and a carbohydrate. For every one gram of either a protein or a carbohydrate, you have four calories. For every one gram of fat, you have nine calories. So now that we have our number of calories that we need to consume, we need to figure out how many macronutrients we need of each one. Now, starting with protein, they say that you should consume roughly 70% to a gram per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should have roughly 140 to 200 grams of protein. Moving along, we go to the fat macronutrient and typically they say anywhere from 15%, which I find is really low, all the way up to 30% of calories should come from fat. 30 being on the higher end, 15 is very low. I wouldn't really recommend that. Me typically, I do 25% coming from fat. So what you do is you take your calories, you multiply it by 0.25, which will give you a number of calories. And then you divide that by nine because there's nine calories per gram of fat, and that'll give you how many grams of fat you should consume. 
And it's pretty simple. I'm sure you guys can guess going to the carbohydrate. We just take the remaining calories for carbohydrates. We divide it by four because there's four calories per gram of carbohydrate. And that gives you how many carbohydrates you should eat. Now, I don't want you guys to be thinking, oh my God, this is too many carbohydrates. I've never eaten this much in the past. But like I said, remember that it comes to calories in versus calories out. As long as you're getting proper amount of protein, so that's about 70% of your body weight up to one gram per pound of body weight. Um, and as long as you're in a calorie deficit, you'll be fine. Uh, now, moving a step above, there are different splits. You might have heard people say, I do a 40-20-20 split or I do a 40-30-30 split. All that means is the amount of each macronutrient. So what I do, which is a roughly 40% carbohydrate, I'll do about 35% protein and then 25% fat. Uh, reason being is I like to have more carbohydrates just because I'm training for an Ironman, so my workout regimen is more cardio focused. So that's how we calculate how many macronutrients we should be consuming of each. All right, so right here we have the, what I call power oats. This is 60 grams of oatmeal, 10 ounces of almond milk, and then I do three fresh egg whites with two servings of PB2 fit, and then a half a serving of almond butter. I mix that around. It's amazing. The macronutrients are, so a total of 548 calories for this whole bowl. I have 56 grams of carbohydrates, only 18 grams of fat, and 39 grams of protein. So solid meal. I'm going to eat this, and then we are headed out for an aerobic-based bike ride. We'll come back, and we'll talk about meal number two, which would be a post-workout shake. Let's go. So we just got back from the bike ride. Why am I yelling? It was supposed to be like 60 minutes, just a nice little spin. 21.7 miles per hour average, which is amazing. Anyways, we are moving into meal number two, which is going to be a protein shake. Now, before I talk about this, I do want to say, some of you guys probably have a question in regards to protein after workouts. How soon do you have to have protein after a workout? And I think there is a misconception across the fitness industry or whatever you want to call it, that people think that you have to get protein right after you work out. As long as you had like a nice pre-workout meal and you weren't fasted before the workout, I don't think you need to have protein like right after you come home, like boom, protein shake. Um, I think there's kind of a grace period there between, I would say anywhere between like 30 minutes and like two and a half hours, you should have a meal. Uh, again, that's to say that you had a meal before your workout. Now. If you were fasted and you got back from workout, I would say yes, try to get a meal in within 15 to 30 minutes so you don't start breaking muscle down. But um, I had my oatmeal, so I could technically wait. We have the protein shake, which you can call post-workout meal two. You could have this as breakfast, have the oats as post-workout. It really doesn't matter. These are interchangeable. Again, calories in versus calories out. Keep that in mind. 
Okay, so this is one of the easiest shakes to make, one of the tastiest shakes, and it's eight simple ingredients. I call it like the superfood smoothie, right? Just fuels you up. So starting with frozen bananas, we have the Vega Sport Premium Chocolate Protein Powder. This has branch chain amino acids in it. I love this stuff. Uh, also, you have spirulina, which is great for you. Greens powder. Almond milk, we have flaxseed meal, chia seeds. Am I grabbing the right ones? We also have the PB Fit. You guys will see that I, I like this stuff a lot. I tend to go to it. It is just compressed peanuts with no oil. And like I said, the macros are great. Two grams of fat, five carbs, and eight grams of protein. So solid stuff. And then what's not shown here is the acai packet. It's Amazon acai, it's super fruit, super food. So the total calories are 862 calories, uh, 57 grams of carbs. I made a critical mistake uh, in that when I was on my macro thing, um, I was on the wrong meal. So the protein shake is actually 101 carbs, 26 grams of fat, and 60 grams of protein. I'm gonna clean this up, I'm gonna finish this, and then we're going to catch up for more meal ideas. The next two are two of my favorites, so stay tuned. favorite meals to cook. It is the easiest thing. It's incredibly healthy. It has a ton of protein. The macronutrients are great on it. Uh, and it's what I first started eating when I first started running. I was always just doing fish and rice. Uh, it's very simple, but it's also really tasty. So this is 180 grams of rice dry. Uh, this is going to be two servings. So I'm going to eat half of this now with this meal, and then I'm going to eat the other half with my dinner or meal number four. So that's the meal. Amazing. I'm going to tell you guys the macros. Let's get a close-up shot of this bad boy. Total calories and macronutrients for this meal right here is going to be 625 calories, 75 grams of carbohydrates, 11.9 grams of fat, and 52.6 grams of protein. Solid meal. Okay, so we are here, the final, the finale, meal number four. I would say once every two weeks I'll have red meat, if that. Um, I saw bison at the store. I think I had seen someone eat it on a YouTube video, and so I went to the store naturally. I was like, oh, that sounds good. So I got it, but, all right, so we're doing 10 ounces of bison steak seasoned with salt, pepper, and Cajun seasoning. And then we're doing a mixed vegetable medley with the white rice left over from meal three, and then I also did a greens salad, so. Let's cook this and then I will let you guys know what the calories and the macros are. Let's go. Amazing, I'm so excited to eat this. I'll take a bite right now. Um, oh my God, oh my God. Total carbohydrates, 90. Total fat, six grams of fat and 72 grams of protein. Now I want you guys to know that, uh, you know, with the protein, proteins are interchangeable, meaning you don't have to do the same protein that I'm doing. Uh, you could do things like salmon, you could do a rockfish, you could do a whitefish like halibut or tilapia. You could do lean ground turkey versus uh, bison. 
Um, you could do salmon. So know that in regards to protein, you can change it out. You don't have to do what I'm doing. We've talked about calories. We've talked about macros, calculating how to get your macronutrients. We've gone through all four meals. I guess the last thing we have to talk about is workouts and cardio, which we will do tomorrow. All right, so we are nearly about to wrap this video up. But before we do that, we have to talk about workouts and cardio. Now, something that I wanna let you guys know, as you'll see the trend of this video, that things, you just really need to keep them simple. Simple is the best. And with that, I will say, never forget the basics because the basics lay the foundation for what we are going to build. That said, in regards to a workout, I would say if you're new to working out and you're just wanting to get some type of regimen started, I would recommend what they call PPL, a push day, a pull day, and a leg day, and then an off day, and then you repeat it and you do that. And I think it's perfect if you're just starting out in the gym. A push day is any muscle group where you're pushing. So things like chest, triceps, shoulders. On a pull day, you're gonna do things like back, and biceps, and then a leg day, obviously, you can do a whole bunch of leg exercises, lunges, squats, front squats, whatever you can think of, Bulgarian split squat, I don't know. Um, so that's that in regards to working out. Now you can get a little more technical and you can start to do things like hypertrophy training. You can train heavier, lower amount of reps if you wanna do strength training. Again, it just depends on what your goals are and what you're looking to do. Are you going for aesthetics or are you going for muscle functionality because you're an athlete? Moving on to cardio. Now, me, I do a lot of cardio partly because I'm training for an Ironman, and the other half of that is I really like doing cardio, going out for long one hour runs because it helps me clear my mind. It's very therapeutic. So, do you need cardio? No, I don't think you need it. However, it is extremely beneficial if you are looking to lose excess belly fat or also to looking to strengthen your heart. The heart is a muscle, cardiovascular, and doing some type of cardiovascular exercise is good for that. So I do recommend, I don't think you need to do five to seven days of cardio a week. I think even two days a week of some type of maybe hit cardio, maybe you're doing sprints on a treadmill for 10 to 15 minutes. Maybe you just go for walks outside and take work calls. Whatever it is, I do recommend some type of cardio. That's my two cents on workouts and cardio. Again, don't overdo it, don't overthink it. Without simplicity, you can't build complexion. So remember that, lay the foundation, keep it basic. And with that guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that, it was very long, but I feel like it's one of the most insightful videos I've ever done to date. I have a race this Saturday, Oceanside 70.3 Half Ironman, so I will not see you guys until then. If you want to follow along and get updated, you can follow me on Instagram, alec.merlino. I will be posting pictures there, I'm sure, in some type of story. Maybe I'll give someone my phone. Anyways, that's all I got. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Peace!